Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And welcome back to another Gun Rant, where I overanalyze video game guns for fun. If you haven't seen my previous videos on this subject, then you ought to check them out right after this one. Basically, my whole point is that all the weapons in Fallout are extremely cursed. And I just love them so much, in fact, that this is my third video on this topic. I'm just uh, very passionate about this game, you could say. This time around, I'll be critiquing and rating the designs of the energy weapons, along with any other special or miscellaneous weapons. All of the weapons in this list are pure fantasy, so I won't be able to scrutinize their functionality down to the atomic level, but I'll try my best to speculate. Even though I'm no expert in this technology, there's some rather obvious basic design flaws. And of course, in classic Fallout fashion, some of these guns just make zero sense whatsoever. So let's go ahead and see just how cursed these guns truly are. So first, we should start with the perfect weapon to set the tone. It's everyone's favorite, the laser musket. It's likely the very first energy weapon you'll pick up, and it leaves a pretty pathetic first impression. Imagine you walk out of a vault, kill some goons raiding a museum, and then you pick up a wind-up toy that shoots laser beams. Amazing. Fallout 4 especially has an issue with toy-like guns, and the laser musket is the epitome of it all. You have to wind up this gun like a damn jack-in-the-box toy. To be as fair as possible, crank guns do exist, such as the famous Gatling gun, but this is not a Gatling gun. Instead of the gun firing continuously while operating the crank, you have to use the crank to charge up the weapon, and then it'll fire. So that's kind of lame. Overall, the vibes don't give off a sense of badassery. It feels extremely goofy, if anything, and it just makes me feel like a total clown when having to crank this thing up. It's supposed to be a laser gun powered by fusion cells, so why would the crank even be necessary? I guess, uh, somehow, some way, the gears use mechanical energy and store it as potential energy in the, uh, whatever the thing in the middle is. The laser chamber, you could call it. But that's the thing. I don't see why you would need to charge up the weapon to have to fire it. That's not how fusion cells work in Fallout. At least, uh, that's what I remember. Please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I know, all the weapons in Fallout that use fusion cells are automatic, and they don't require any sort of manual loading in between shots. After all, laser weapons are supposed to be futuristic, so that's what you'd expect. Yet, this design is completely regressive. I get that it's supposed to be a post-war handmade weapon, but still, it doesn't make any sense. The biggest issue, really, is that you don't even load fusion cells into the weapon, yet that's the ammunition that it uses, so I guess it just teleports into the laser chamber through sheer force of will. But no, I think it's just a huge oversight. Other than its core design, it's an absolute chore to use in combat. You have to spend more time in cranking this thing, rather than actually shooting it, and over time, it gets really annoying to have to spam the reload key over and over and over and over again. Provided that you have it fully upgraded, it deals some pretty good damage. But overall, the DPS is lackluster, and there's no reason to choose this over anything else. And god forbid, should you miss, you'll have to awkwardly crank up your goofy little laser toy while being gunned down by men with real guns. After picking up the laser musket off that dead Miniman, it becomes clear as to why the rest of the squad was wiped out, because their main service weapon is absolute garbage. Out of all of the designs they could craft up, they settled on this. But why? There's no reason why the laser musket has to have this crank. It was only put there to make it unique and quirky, I guess. But it's more of a silly gimmick than anything. And that's why I never use it. I absolutely despise the laser musket. Its design makes zero sense, and it's zero fun to use. So I'll give it zero out of five bottle caps. But let's go ahead and move on to the regular laser gun. First off, I'll say the aesthetics are rather lacking. It's basically a rectangular prism with a stock on it, which is disappointing because I was expecting a cool, futuristic design. You'd think the manufacturers would invest more research into the ergonomics of this high-tech, futuristic weapon. But no, it's just a plastic box, and it doesn't look too comfortable to use. For being such a futuristic laser weapon, 
It has some rather rudimentary iron sights. Like, come on, the pipe gun has better irons than this. Sure, you can solve that easily by using a reflex sight or a scope, but the default sights shouldn't be that basic. Also, I suppose I should mention this now. Uh, should laser weapons actually have recoil? They are shooting laser beams after all, and they don't have mass, do they? I don't know how they would work in real life because, you know, uh, sadly, I don't own one. If there's any scientists out there, please let me know what your theory is. Are y'all team recoil or team no recoil? Either way, I'm sure we can all agree that the recoil on the laser gun is ridiculously high. It's got more recoil than the assault rifle, handmade rifle, and combat rifle combined. Again, it makes no sense as to why such a futuristic weapon would be so uncontrollable and inaccurate, especially since it's a laser gun. Also, why would the laser have to be limited to being a repeating weapon? Couldn't it just be one long continuous beam until you let off the trigger? If anything, I suppose it's limited in that aspect to prevent the gun from overheating, but still, it'd be cool to see a laser gun that has a continuous, uninterrupted beam. Other than that, I don't really have too much else to say. I can't say I hate the laser gun with a burning passion, but it's certainly not a well thought out design. Overall, it's boring and uninspiring. Sadly, it's just another generic toy-like gun that has no soul. I'll give it one out of five bottle caps. You know what? I take back all that I said about the laser gun, because the Institute's version makes it look like a 10 out of 10 in comparison. It's basically the same thing as the regular laser gun, with the same animations and function, but with a different model. Somehow though, it's even uglier and bulkier. Just look at it! This obese cereal box takes up the whole damn screen! Do you really expect me to believe that some of the smartest minds in the post-war world made this abomination? Like, you'd think they'd improve upon the pre-war design, but no. They took a look at it and said, let's make it bulkier and more cumbersome for no reason at all. I swear, these Yankee liberals don't know a darn thing about designing guns. Like, come on, it looks like a kindergartner drew this thing. The only thing it has going for it over the regular laser gun is that, you know, at least all the internals are covered, but that's literally it. In every other aspect, it's a straight downgrade, and it pains my eyes to look at it. I don't have much else to add about the Institute laser gun specifically. It's just a lazy reskin of the regular laser gun. A very ugly reskin at that. I actually hate this one, and I never want to look at it again. Zero out of five bottle caps. For another energy weapon, we have the Plasma Gun. Instead of shooting lasers, this one shoots green balls of energy, which do have a good amount of mass. They are slow-moving projectiles though, so you'll have to compensate for ranged targets. This one is up for speculation because, uh, I don't know how plasma balls would actually work, but I would really hope they would move faster than that. A projectile this slow is definitely not optimal for a ranged combat situation. Like, seriously, it moves slower than a damn airsoft gun. But hey, uh, at least the projectile travels in a straight line, so you don't have to worry about that part. But still, that's the main reason why I don't like using the plasma gun because the projectile is too damn slow, and I miss most of my shots at range. Sometimes you might get lucky, and your target will just stand there and eat your plasma balls, because, as we all know, the AI in Fallout is absolutely brain dead. When it comes to the actual design of the weapon, well, it does have some visual interest. I like all the exposed bits and moving parts. It's pretty neat, and it looks like it could be a wonder weapon in COD Zombies. On the downside, though, it's got these same issues as the laser gun, the ergonomics are an afterthought, and the iron sights are dog water. I think it's really silly how all these high-tech weapons sell themselves short when it comes to those features. They are very important after all. At this point, I honestly think we ought to have all energy weapons in Fallout come with a built-in integral reflex sight. And also, they really need a stock that's more than just a basic metal frame. That would be much more characteristic for the level of technology it's supposed to represent. Overall, I think the plasma gun is kind of cool. It's a little cartoonish, but I do like it. All it needs is a few improvements to its ergonomics and performance to make it more practical. I'll give the plasma gun 2.5 out of 5 bottle caps. In a similar, yet totally different vein, we've also got the Alien Blaster. It's another plasma-based gun. 
I, uh, I think. I don't know exactly what it is, because it's, uh, alien technology, so, of course, I'm gonna have zero clue on how this thing works. Either way, the ammunition is referred to as alien blaster rounds, which are very slow moving orbs of energy. These are even slower than the plasma guns. For good airsoft, these have less velocity than a nerf gun. Like I said earlier, these slow moving projectiles are definitely not optimal for ranged combat, and these are so slow that you'll have a hard time hitting moving targets past 10 yards. The amount you have to compensate for is ludicrous, and if you couple that with the garbage iron sights, it's uh, basically only usable at point blank ranges. You'd think this advanced, alien civilization could come up with an ingenious weapon, one that is light years ahead of humanity. I mean, they have the technology to travel around the galaxy in spaceships, but they can't even make a half-decent weapon. The Alien Blaster is an awful design, and it's yet another perfect example of a silly, gimmicky, toy-like gun. Sure, the aesthetics are just a part of Zayton culture, and normally, I would let that part slide, only if the rest of the weapon made sense and was actually usable in combat. So yeah, I hate the Alien Blaster, and it's completely irrelevant anyway. So, I'll give it zero out of five bottle caps. Now for a proper blaster design, the Zaytans should take advice from Earthlings, because the Thirst Zapper is easily the pinnacle of energy weapon technology. I mean, it's literally just perfect, and I have no complaints. It's simply a toy water gun that you can use to play games in Nuka World, or to fry Coulter's suit. So it serves its purpose well. It's definitely the most realistic and stylish weapon in the whole game, too. Like I said, I can't think of anything to criticize. The Thirst Zapper is truly the peak of Bethesda's weapon design. Nothing else can top this one. Five out of five bottle caps. I love it. Now, let's move on to the Cryolator. It's like a flamethrower, but with ice. And just like the Flamer, the range is absolutely abysmal but at least it deals a good amount of damage. If you upgrade it to use the crystallized barrel though, then it'll shoot out deadly snowballs which are actually stupidly overpowered. Which is hilarious because this weapon wasn't even intended to be used as one. It was created in Vault 111 simply because the Overseer was bored and wanted something to play with. So yes, this is quite literally another toy gun, but it looks more like a pile of rubbish and scrap metal. To be fair, that's part of its lore. It's obviously made from spare parts that the Vault Dwellers could find. And I guess I'll commend them for being resourceful, but still. This thing is just not very pretty, and it's unnecessarily bulky. So much so, that it's actually classified as a heavy weapon. I didn't even know that until I looked it up on the wiki, but uh, anyway. I don't know what to think about the Cryolator, really. In some ways, I like it. In other ways, I absolutely hate it. What I like most about this design is that you'll see the weapon freeze over when not shooting, which is very visually interesting, but that's about it when it comes to looks. I also think it's pretty fun to use, and it's satisfying to see your enemies freeze up and shatter into little pieces. Very cool. It may be an ugly gun, but at least it's powerful enough to be taken seriously, unlike some other examples. Honestly, it's a bit too powerful. Way too much, actually. I think it's goofy that a glorified snowball thrower has higher DPS than a minigun, but obviously, Bethesda knows how to balance their game properly, so I won't question it. One of the biggest downsides of the Cryolator is that you'll run out of ammo pretty quickly, and after your initial supply is depleted, you'll have a hard time finding any more. It's unique ammunition after all, only used for the Cryolator, so you won't be finding it all over the Commonwealth. It's a miracle that somehow vendors will sell you the ammunition, but still, it's just not enough to use this gun regularly. I find it to be a one-time use weapon. After I burn through my initial supply, I quickly forget about it and move on to something else. It's just sad how this weapon was implemented, and I think the whole Corral gun concept should have been taken more seriously. It should have been made as a legitimate weapon, not this silly toy that we ended up getting. The Cryolator isn't that bad, really, but it is ultimately disappointing. I'll give it 1.5 out of 5 bottle caps. For another elemental weapon, there's the Tesla Rifle. It's, uh, creative and interesting, to say the least. It shoots out a frenzy of electricity and zaps everyone in its path. The arcs even jump from target to target, so it's a handy tool for taking out crowds of enemies. I can't say it's super overpowered or underpowered, it seems balanced. Uh, maybe. I don't know. 
It's hard to tell what's balanced in this game because of how horribly balanced everything is. But anyway, besides its performance, its overall design is uh, weird and uh, I don't even know where to begin dissecting it. I can appreciate some of the unique elements here, but uh, I can't say I like it overall. I also think it's odd that it doesn't have a stock, but it's whatever. You know the drill at this point. It's a fantasy weapon, it doesn't make sense, it's big and bulky, and it looks a little cartoonish. I do like the concept behind it, and this one looks to be a handmade weapon, so that'll explain its crudeness, but still, it just looks ugly. That's all I gotta say about the Tesla rifle. I'm just not filled with enough energy to go in depth about it. And this weapon is irrelevant anyway. I'll give it a solid one bottle cap and call it a day. Another interesting Automatron weapon is the Assaultron head. How many of y'all remember this one? I sure don't, and I never used it. And nobody should ever use it, because it's probably the worst weapon in the entire game. I'd rather use the Thirst Zapper than this thing, because at least that one doesn't give you cancer. When using the Assaultron head, it'll give you a big chunk of rads with each shot. Is it worth it? No. Not one bit. The damage is pathetic. You have to charge up the weapon too, but even at full blast, it's underwhelming. So it has a low DPS and it damages the user. There's zero reason to use this weapon. It must be meant as a joke, and I can appreciate some good humor, but come on, at least show some love and care. That's the main problem. No effort was put into making this weapon. All the devs did was take an Assaultron head model and give it default pistol animations. It would have been way cool if you held this thing up like Simba and blasted your enemies with a mighty, unending laser beam, but what we got is one of the lamest weapons in the entire game. And just like several other unique weapons, it's completely irrelevant and unusable in a normal playthrough. The only way anyone would ever consider using the Assaultron head is if they wanted to do some kind of challenge run, but you'd have to be a total buffoon to do that. No one would dare use the Assaultron head. It's unusable! I use this word a lot with Bethesda, but this time it's totally warranted. Laziness. The Assaultron head is a lazy design, and it was a complete waste of time even putting this thing into the game. Zero out of five bottle caps. I hate it. Now, if for some reason you do want to deal radiation damage, but in the correct direction, then you should try out the Gamma Gun. It's a little handmade gun that shoots out waves of radiation. No clue how it works, but let's assume it's possible. Would this weapon actually be useful? Maybe, but in Fallout, it only works half the time because its only damage type is radiation. So it's rendered completely useless against all the wastelands irradiated monsters and animals. It only causes damage to humans, and uh, even then, it's not like it outperforms regular weapons, so that begs the question. Why make this gun in the first place? I get that the Children of Adam love their radiation, but there's no reason to make a radiation weapon when you live out in the middle of nowhere and your most common enemy would be wild irradiated monsters. I don't think they thought that part through. Uh, they aren't that bright though, so I suppose it makes sense if you look at it that way. But still, the Gamma Gun is just silly and pointless, and overall, the look of the weapon is ugly too. I suppose that's expected since it's handmade, but I don't care. I don't like it. I can't say I hate it either, nor do I care enough to examine every last inch of this weapon. In the end, it's just another irrelevant gimmick weapon. I'll give it the standard 1 out of 5 bottle caps. In some cases, you're better off using the Flare Gun as a weapon. At least this one deals physical damage. Of course, its main purpose is to shoot a flare into the sky to call for help, but obviously, it's way more fun to use it as a combat weapon. In all seriousness, I really can't complain about the flare gun. It's a flare gun, and it's actually a very accurate representation. It's funny that out of all of the guns in Fallout, a damn flare gun is one of the most realistic and reasonable designs. But yeah, I have no complaints here. The flare gun is perfect. Five out of five bottle caps. Nice. For another realistic design, we have the Syringer. It's a pipe gun that shoots darts. And honestly, it's a pretty solid looking model. I really like how it's just a simple pneumatic pipe gun. No unnecessary moving parts or anything. It's probably the most realistic handmade weapon in Fallout 4. I find it funny how the regular pipe guns literally defy the laws of physics, while this one actually makes a good amount of sense. The sad part though, is that this weapon is completely useless. For such a simple scrap gun, you'd expect it to be a common early game weapon, but no, 
It's actually a unique weapon they have to find at Fort Hagen. So, by the time you find it, you already have plenty of real guns that do lots of damage. Not only that, but you won't get any free ammo for this thing. You have to craft it for yourself, which further makes the syringer less accessible. Even if you do go out of your way to pick this thing up and craft the ammo for it, it's just not worth it. The darts don't deal direct damage, instead they all have different status effects. The bleeding darts do deal damage over time though, so at least those work, but the rest are too situational. And I don't like playing around in combat, I'd rather make it simple and shoot to kill. It's too bad really, because the overall design of the syringer is pretty cool, so I will give it some credit for that part. But unfortunately, the implementation and balancing spoils the rest of it. Two out of five bottle caps. It could have been great. Another interesting unique weapon is the railway rifle. As you can infer from the name, it's a steam-powered gun that shoots railroad spikes. Very uh, creative idea, I'll give him that. But even if it was possible to make, it wouldn't be worth all the time and effort. You're better off using an actual gun, or just an air gun for that matter. A steam-powered gun is simply not practical, and it probably weighs a ton too. The railway rifle obviously only exists for the sake of having a weapon to fit the railroad's theme, but perhaps they took it too literally. It even makes train noises when you reload it, which is kind of funny, I'll admit. It's also pretty fun to nail degenerates against walls with this thing. However, I can't take myself seriously when using this weapon. It's just jarring how out of place it is. Maybe it would be better off in a steampunk game, not Fallout. Overall, it's a goofy, ugly, oversized gun that doesn't make any sense, but I'll give it a little bit of credit for being fun to use. 1.5 out of 5 bottle caps. Now for a true railgun, we have the Gauss Rifle. It uses the power of magnetism to launch a 2mm projectile at extremely high velocities. This is another fantasy weapon, but railguns are slowly starting to become more prevalent now. Just in the past few years, real Gauss Rifle prototypes have been produced, and they are functional. The Gauss Rifle in Fallout 4, though, is way more powerful than the ones you'll see in real life, but we can go ahead and assume that's because the technology is simply more advanced. It also looks like it shoots out some kind of energized beam in addition to the projectile, which we haven't seen demonstrated in real life just yet. Perhaps that's the secret that we need to make these guns more practical. In this case, I do like that you need to charge up the weapon to make it deal full damage. And unlike the other chargeable weapons in the game, this one actually dishes out some serious damage, and it's super satisfying to get those long-range snipes. Overall, the design is very aesthetic. I like how it fuses together crude handmade parts with its futuristic nature. The Nixie tubes on the back that measure your charge are definitely the coolest part, and seeing the coils light up before firing is a neat spectacle. My only complaint is that it's way too bulky, but perhaps that's necessary for all the tech needed to make the weapon function or, or something. Other than that, I think the top fed disc magazine is an odd choice, but it's not like those are unheard of. Overall, the Gauss Rifle is genuinely a good looking weapon, and I can't believe I would commend Bethesda for a fantasy weapon design, but they did do a good job on this one. I can't say for sure if this exact design would work in real life, but it looks believable enough. I could be totally wrong though, because given Bethesda's track record so far, they've proven they don't have a clue on how guns work, and it'd be the twist of the century if the only gun they got right was the Gauss Rifle. So if there happens to be any Gauss Rifle experts out there, then please let me know what your opinions are on this one. I know I just may have to come back in 10 years and re-examine this weapon, but for now, it looks functional. It does look similar to the real life examples that we already have, and this might be a case where reality imitates art. They both have that sci-fi futuristic aesthetic, but the one in Fallout is of course more retro, and it fits perfectly into the wasteland. I'm not kidding guys, I like the Gauss Rifle. It's one of the most intriguing weapons in the whole game, visually and functionally. Solid job on this one. 4 out of 5 bottle caps. Whoever designed the Gauss Rifle deserves a raise, a cookie, and a kiss on the cheek. Of course, it could have been done better in some ways, but it's about time I show some positivity. I'm not that biased after all. I do try to give credit where credit's due. It's just that the vast majority of the weapons in Fallout 4 are utter trash. And I'm glad I'm finally done with this little mini-series of gun rants, because I have now suffered from irreparable brain damage after subjecting myself to these god-awful weapons. <laughs> There's still plenty more I could have gone on about, but I think I'm done for now. That's enough ranting for me. 
but I'm curious to see what y'all have to say. What do you think about the weapons at Fallout 4? And what other games would you like to see me cover? Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, I'll start on the next video. It'll be focused on replacing all the weapons in Fallout 4 with mods. So, it'll be some good eye bleach after witnessing the horrors of the vanilla arsenal. If you want to keep up to date for when I release a new video, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon with all notifications. And consider joining the Discord too. Also, if you like this video, then you better disintegrate that like button. With all that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. The well rare <sighs> fucking hell. The railway rifle, the railway the railway rifle. Damn, that's hard to say. The the railway rifle. The <laughs> God damn it!